much for joining us for today's session. My name is Barrett Johannesson, and I will be the host for today. For today's topic, we are going through Xeran Software Solutions for Engineers. Before I hand it over to Connor, I do want to talk about some of the upcoming iForm Builder events that we have. Uh, the first one that I have listed is our iForm Builder Certification. Now, throughout the year, we do have online certification course uh, classes, and if you click on the link later on, it'll bring you to, to the page to view the calendar and to sign up for one of those sessions. We also offer on-site certification, so if you are a, a group that wants to have five or more individuals uh, certified with Form Builder, uh, we can go on-site or we can do those remotely, and we'd be happy to give you more information on that. Our next certification session is the day before our Power User Summit, and it's in Herndon, Virginia at our office. And so if you're local, I'd love for you to come by and uh, join that certification session. Um, it's the two days prior, so it's actually the Monday and Tuesday, and uh, you can get certified in a week. So uh, the other piece that we have here is our Power User Summit, and that is on May 11th. And like I said, the certification is right before that. But the Power User Summit is a great time to come in and learn about other projects going on or learn about other iForm Builder projects, how they deploy those projects, and how they've been successful. Not only learn from other customers, but learn from the iForm Builder team. And just a hint, we are going to show off the new form builder, and you'll be able to play around uh, with the new form builder during the iForm Builder certification course, and you'd be able to see it during the Power User Summit. So please uh, register for that as well if, if you can. So we have a quick poll for you, uh, if you don't mind answering it. It's just finding out if you are a current iForm Builder user, and uh, if you wouldn't mind just putting in your responses, that would be great. And at this point, Connor, I'm going to hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Barrett. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Connor Henwood. I am an account manager here at Xerion Software and iForm Builder. Um, just a brief history of myself. I was previously with an engineering environment or engineering company. Um, I was in the civil space, civil engineering space, I'm doing a lot of SSCS work, stormwater work. So, you know, collecting data at a high level and a mass amounts of data was important, especially from a GIS side of things. And, and ultimately how all that data is, you know, confined and, and, and then dumped into the back end to obviously produce, you know, very good deliverables and everything else for, for engineering environment. Um, in this session, uh, I want to take you through the steps, uh, you know, to maximize time and productivity utilizing the iCombotor platform. Um, I have a, a couple demos that are a demo I want to show you. I'm going to talk through, you know, even starting in the Esri environment, walking through the SQL Server data pipe, utilizing some of our new tools, and everything from A to Z in that sense. Uh, you know, an overview or agenda of today's meeting. I want to talk through best practices and lessons learned when deploying engineering projects. Um, everything from planning, implementation, distribution. Uh, the importance of the dedicated database that we offer and how do you utilize that into your team. Uh, training and support, um, everything from, you know, just lean on us as much as you can to, you know, one, support, help desk, professional services, everything that Xeran offers. Uh, you know, you definitely utilize that to expand your knowledge in the, in the iPhone Builder platform as well as the back end platform. So best practices and lessons learned. Um, I always like to, when I talk to my engineering groups, uh, you know, recently I've, I've talked to a bunch that they're, they're really taking the implementation part of, uh, of rolling out iPhone Builder seriously. Um, you know, building an internal strategy is important. As long as you have a team surrounding you internally, develop a couple champions, you know, really leverage the iPhone Builder platform, uh, you can definitely be ultimately successful with the iPhone Builder platform. Uh, distribution, how do you roll it out? Um, everything from building forms, uh, having a few people building forms, um, you never want too many cooks in the kitchen, but you want to ultimately have, you know, somebody that, that, that can build out strong forms to ultimately go out into the field. Um, and then again, communication from field to office. Um, a lot of groups really find out quick uh, the, uh, you know, the lack of communication from the field to the office. Um, so, you know, you have 25 different groups doing, let's say, manhole inspections. Um, you know, 15 groups do it one way, 10 groups do it the other way. So it, how do you kind of build the form from, you know, top to bottom to now put everybody in the same workflow? Um, you know, saving time and money is key, and especially in the engineering environment, how everything's billable. So 
we're definitely helping uh, helping in that sense of automating the workflow. Um, the importance of a dedicated database. Uh, I think this is highly important in the engineering environment. I like to talk through it as uh, building capacity, almost in a six layers six layer step. You know, scalability, um, easier management of users, projects, and forms. Uh, how do you scale? We're in the business of you know setting up your dedicated database, setting up your environment, but we ultimately want you to scale into it. You know, really. So Connor, you know, take, as, as you. Oops, sorry. Uh, can we ahead. just take a step back and uh, can you talk through what a dedicated database is for those who don't know? Right, right. So a dedicated database is a standalone environment. We like to picture it as the hotel uh, analogy. So if you're with uh, if you're with us or before you migrated to the dedicated database. Um, or you just sign up for iPhone Builder, you want to try out iPhone Builder. Um, we like to say you are now on iPhoneBuilder.com. So you are www.iPhoneBuilder.com. You're in the iPhone Builder hotel. You just have a room in our hotel. You're, you're able to leverage our forms, build forms, assign users, et cetera. Um, with the dedicated database, we like to picture it as you now own your whole floor of the hotel. You now have a, almost a standalone environment uh, that we personally set up through Rackspace and we set it up and uh, sets you up an environment to where it ultimately leads into you know building capacity whether now you have your server admin now you have different company admins you have multiple different profiles you can create and this is all very important especially in the engineering environment because one flexibility and customization is key but visibility and security is even is even more important um, and you know the server admin especially in the engineering environment how do you have um, you know, how do you have multiple different groups within a dedicated database? So if you have an office in Seattle, uh, Chicago, Dallas, and DC, well, how do we now separate these, uh, these different offices in the dedicated database to now where, you know, the groups in Seattle can see, can't see inspections going on in DC? Or if I wanna leverage uh, different users in Texas, I wanna put them in a different profile than in, in, than in Chicago. Um, so, the dedicated database is, is highly important, and I think that you know groups are really leveraging in that sense that you know project-based work, right? So that's the name of the game in engineering is how can you get reoccurring projects and setting up different profiles for different projects ultimately builds a strong foundation when it comes to structure, um, one internally and two to you know, organize your projects. So can you would you say that um, coming from your past experience? You guys started with an account in iformbuilder.com and then you upgraded to the dedicated database. Could you Correct. have done all that you did without the upgrade or was the dedicated database a must have? So the dedicated database was definitely a must have because you start bogging down uh, you know, just the standalone environment of the, the iformbuilder.com. Um, you start mixing users from different offices. Um, people, you know, have rights they shouldn't have. You know, the server admin can now assign a user rights with a dedicated database, where you can now have access to manage anything from the from the uh, mobile device. Um, you know, one thing that I definitely saw an advantage of the dedicated database is being able to customize it, add your logo to it, add a little sauce, add a little flavor. You know, give give your company kind of its own little web portal for all the data that's being collected around the nation or around the world. So that's where I definitely see an advantage in the dedicated database. And uh, I think that's, that's you know, does that answer your question, Barrett? Yes, it does. And just a follow-up question. I mean, since we have some individuals who are new to iForm Builder here, how, how quickly do you think they should go from an iForm Builder account into a dedicated database? Um, it, it all depends on, you know, the amount of, uh, amount of time, obviously. Um, and what's great about engineering is you can find out about a project tomorrow and then a new solution has to be implemented the next week. So it depends on time. It depends on, you know, the availability of in build, building that internal strategy. Um, you know, implementation is key. I like to say that, you know, all the time. Um, but, you know, as for time limit, I don't think it's, you know, it, there's re neither here nor there. It depends on the size of workforce that you're going to have. Um, you know, with the dedicated database, if you have, you know, say if you have 100 field users, it's, it's definitely important to j just go ahead and hop into the dedicated database. Now you can start organizing almost in a tree method of, of you know, different profiles and different setup there. Um, but I mean, the advantage is definitely, is definitely in the dedicated database, but we have a lot of groups that do start out with a pilot type environment just to one, get their feet wet in the form builder and get, you know, get the device out in field crew's hands and, and see what the, see what the overall consensus is. But I think that 
that's kind of where, where I sit with that. So. so the second that they have more than one group working on it, it's easier to have it, to manage it in that dedicated database. So it actually, uh, if they know for a fact that they're going to have two different offices or two different groups working and you don't want to have an overlap, then they should upgrade right away and then build the project from there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, that, that would be the ideal thing unless you want to just constantly maintain and and you know, you know, waste time just maintaining one single mass long table of users or uh, different profile or just the same profile. I'm sorry, um, but I mean, you don't have to have different offices to have just have a dedicated database. That's not really the the name of it. The the most important thing is to scale and build capacity through it. Um, so I mean, if you have one office but have 12 different projects, there's 12 different profiles right there. Um, so if you know you're going to be working on a project for the next 12 weeks, well, you can now be in one profile and not have to worry about seeing other data from other from other projects. So. And uh, just to comment off of that, too, I know that a lot of people upgrade and love the dedicated database because of having a, uh, access to that API. Exactly. You know, API, custom web services, integrations are key. We like to say, you know, uh, we work better together. Um, you know, there's a... The, the, the awesome thing about iPhone Builder is it's on the smart device, right? So you have iOS and Android. So there's a whole different slew of different applications that you can now integrate with. And iPhone Builder definitely puts the team on their back when it comes to that in that sense of integration from hardware to software. Great. Well, let's keep going. Thank you, Connor. No worries. So next best practice and lesson learned is being trained. Training and support is key. You don't want to... Uh, you know, throw somebody in the fire, uh, basically hand them a device, say, fill out the form, get it back to me as soon as possible. Uh, make sure everybody's trained from the office to the field. Um, in internal team training, like I said, you know, find those inner champions that want to, you know, obviously, I keep saying it, but put the team on their back and, uh, and, you know, be a good, you know, form builder. When it comes to form building, um, if you know you have two or three people that are going to be building forms constantly, make sure they get certified. Um, you're going to be working with Barrett through a form building certification class. Um, I did it. It was awesome. You learn stuff that you don't even, you know, you don't even think of. So one thing that I, one lesson that I learned whenever I uh, actually came over to the iPhone Builder team is the, the amount of, you know, the amount of capabilities that the iPhone Builder platform has that we didn't know. Um, you know, we weren't even scratching the surface of what the form builder could do. And that's, and that's something that I talked with a bunch of groups that say, hey, man, it's great. You know, it's working out in the field. We're doing all this. It's just, you know, one long form. And they didn't even know how to create sub forms. They didn't even know how to add picture widgets or annotation widgets, um, you know, any third party attachment widgets. So it's really important to, you know, reach out to us, reach out to our support team, our help desk 24 hours a day. Um, they're very helpful. And, you know, I'm, I'm the account manager for most of the engineering groups that, you know, existing engineering groups within iForm Builder. So don't hesitate to reach out, me, reach out to me directly. And if I can't answer your questions, I'll make sure, you know, I'll get, the, get on the horn and make sure our engineering team or anybody else can help, uh, help in our house. But um, again, in-house end user team support, user guide, kickstart sessions are so important. Um, if you're very new to iForm Builder, one thing that you get whenever you upgrade to a dedicated database is kickstart sessions. And this is where you will work hand in hand with, uh, with Ms. Barrett, Barrett Johannesson on, you know, basically starting from zero. Um, it's, you know, we want to, we want to obviously help your team grow and, you know, obviously collect data at a high level in a secure environment and, and make sure that you know from A to Z form building to, you know, assigning users to maybe even you want to add an endpoint to, you know, access a third party solution. So, you know, that's working with Barrett for the first four hours and, and, and then using those implementation support to, to work with our engineers and make sure that form building is, is key there um, and, and everything from A to Z in that sense. So I want to move into increased productivity with Xerion software. I want to, I want to dive into our uh, almost our slew of, uh, our slew of our Xerion suite of products. Obviously, our flagship product is iPhone Builder. But I want to introduce, and you know, a lot of you may have heard of this, uh, the product called Gnosis that we've been introducing. Uh, we've been talking about it for almost a year now. So it's, you know, it's rolling out, we're testing it, everything is going good. We have, you know, groups that are testing it, groups that are, that are loving it, and, you know, the ultimate tool of Gnosis. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. SQL Server Data Pipe. 
uh, for my Esri people, stand up. It's, uh, you know, how can we get envir how can we get iForm Builder data immediately into SQL Server? Now, how does that SQL Server sit on feature services? How does that SQL Server now run reports, queries, everything from the back end? Let us do the heavy lifting for you in the SQL Server. And then obviously utilizing our professional services. Um, so I want to just dive into each product you know, here briefly and uh, kind of give an overview. But before I do that, Barrett, are there any questions? No, not 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 yet. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds Stuttered good. a little so, bit with that one. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so, uh, just briefly touch on iPhone Builder from the poll earlier. It looks like everybody's in the platform. And again, I want to just you know stress, especially from an engineering standpoint, the importance of these three things right here. The three things we hang our hat on: flexible form building, maximum security, and off on and offline data capabilities. Um, for engineering, I would say offline data capabilities is huge. Um, it's one thing that caught my eye back in my day and when I was in an engineering environment because um, we have groups that are, you know, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the city to, you know, the middle of the woods out in the country in rural areas. Um, so flexible form building, you know, really take advantage of, uh, you know, subform data or in our GIS terms, related table data. Um, you know, make sure we can help automate systems through form building. So, you know, you have, uh, you have, you know, certain assets that have barcodes on them that you want to scan the barcode and it auto populates the whole parent form. But now you can now dive into inspections, dive into new, you know, different new workflows within subforms that are all attached into one record. Um, everything's in a maximum security. Security, we are unmatched and everything is from page level to, you know, uh, element level encryption and et cetera. But iPhone Builder is definitely our bread and butter and we're, we're sticking to our guns there. Um, before, so I, before I have you go into Gnosis, sorry, Connor, uh, we do have some folks who actually aren't iForm Builder users yet and are still learning. And, um, you know, they understand that we're a cloud-based solution, but they're also wondering, does, do, we, do they have to store their data in the cloud? Uh, do, and they're, basically, they're wondering if we have private installations. So can you speak briefly on that, too? Right, right. So we uh, we do have private installations, but a lot of groups are leveraging our API. Um, now, I don't know if that's something you want to touch on, Barrett, um, but do you want to? Sure. Um, so I guess uh, for those who, of you who are new, uh, like we mentioned, we are cloud-based, and we have we have centers, data centers here in the U.S., but we also have some in the U.K. and in Australia. We have we do perform private installations. And that does come with an extra cost, of course. But uh, if you feel that you you at no no way possible is it an option for you to have your data stored in the cloud, then I would recommend uh, doing the private installation. We also have a more secure environment, um, cloud environment that is HIPAA compliant and has even ad additional layers of security. So. Um, if that's something that you guys are interested in and you want to learn more about, then we can definitely talk about that. And Connor and I would love to answer more of those questions later, but I just wanted to mention it. Great. And just Great. going off of the API, um, and because I'm not sure if you're going to do that in a little bit, but for those of you who aren't familiar with what API is, it's uh, it allows you developers to automate workflows. So it allows you to take information from maybe another um, data center that you have or another database that you have and pre-populate form information with it. So you're going to have that data flow bi-directionally from iForm Builder into other locations, um, whether it's a web solution or if it's your own internal um, database, then we're able to connect it either through the API or through post URL. And post URL is something we can we go into uh, more detail in in actually our webinar next week for data integrations. Uh, there was another question that asks, can you tell us the difference between the SQL Server data pipe and Zapier integration? Would you like to take that or would you like uh, me to address that? Um, if you don't mind, Barrett, you can address more of the Zapier uh, type integration and then I'll touch on the SQL Server data pipe. Sure. So for those Very of you cool. who aren't aware of Zapier, uh, Zapier is a web tool that allows you to connect multiple web services together. Uh, they have over 500 different web apps available and Zapier allows you to essentially connect them and say every time a record is completed in iForm Builder, then post it to my 
uh, CRM tool or whatever it may be. So you're able to configure that workflow and automate it so that you no longer have to do it, which is really great. Um, Zapier uses our API, but it allows individuals to who are non-developers to build that automation. Uh, the SQL Server, for, SQL Server data pipe is very different um, because with Zapier, you're not able to actually, to my knowledge, you're not able to get your data from iForm Builder into a SQL Server data pipe, uh, a SQL Server uh, database. So Correct. And, I, and I'm going to touch on the SQL Server data pipe here in the next few slides. So, Perfect. Great. Um, if that so individual has any other questions, just let me know. And anyone else, just keep adding your questions. Thank you. Great, great. So I just wanted to dive briefly into uh, to our you know new product called Gnosis. Um, basically, you know, talking with a bunch of engineering groups, a big problem that we're seeing is you know if you look at the if you look at a workflow in three levels, you have the data collection in the first level and the visualization and, and uh, deliverable in the third level. But a lot of people are kind of forgetting about that second tier. Um, where that data is coming in and how that data is getting to where it needs to go. How is that data refined, aggregated, and, you know, obviously, ref, you know, refined down to where it's, it's you know, it's used to, uh, used for the deliverable. Um, basically, you know, I like to say Gnosis think big, right? Companies must rethink and redesign how they structure, organize, and manage their data. Um, we like to almost look at it as a, almost a centralization. It's, it's, it's now, you know, data can come in from iForm Builder, data can come in from multiple different sources, and it centralizes into Gnosis. And Gnosis now streamlines the data wherever it needs to go. It's highly secure, it's built on a trust no one system. Um, it's a workflow engine that allows large amounts of data and, you know, to store long term and ultimately move to move and streamline where it needs to be. This next slide, I'm showing you just a, a couple screenshots of inside the Gnosis environment. Uh, the top left there, you'll see that, you know, we kind of have where, where data is flowing in. Um, so it's storing in what we call buckets. Um, the bucket can now, you can now, you know, obviously write queries through the bucket to transform data a certain way, to attach uh, different records in, you know, a certain way, and, and really, you know, build custom workflows within the Gnosis environment. Um, at the bottom left there, how do you see your raw data immediately within Gnosis? Um, I mean, everything from this is a developer's dream right here is to where you can see your raw data, manipulate it straight from our Gnosis environment to seeing live graphs up in the top right there to see almost project, uh, you know, project statuses. You know, I mean, we, we got multiple different data coming in. Uh, you know, where's our high infractions? Where are our low infractions? And uh, everything can be seen within the Gnosis environment there. And uh, would, you know, are there any questions and concerns, Barrett? Or do you, you want to add anything with the Gnosis? Sure. Um, Gnosis is such a powerful tool that sometimes it's hard to fully grasp it right away. Uh, the, right. the greatest part about it is, and the simplest way to think about it is you can take multiple data sources. So you can take iForm Builder data. Um, maybe you have, again, another database that you're using. You can bring in that data set. And what you can do is you can compile those two data sets together. You can aggregate those results. You can even edit those results so that they match up. And uh, from there, you're able to create a new, um, a new output of the, those data sets. So it's really a process of managing the data itself and in a very, very secure environment um, that, that we've created here for you. So managing and editing and aggregating those, your data to create a custom output and a custom um, export essentially if you need to it can it, it'll be able you'll be able to integrate that uh, into other sources as well so right now well, what a lot of groups will have to go through this process where they're almost doing this data cleanse and uh, manually they're adding editing multiple data sets and then copying and pasting them into one well gnosis allows you to bring in all those data sets quickly identify uh, what fields need to be edited and compiled together and then create one or more uh, outputs based off of that data. So it's really powerful in that way. Uh, we do have some other webinars that give great examples of Gnosis and one of the examples that Connor is going to give later today is going to use a portion of Gnosis and uh, the, the portion that it, he's going to show off is using the SQL Server data pipe. Right, right. So I'm going to dive into that now. Um, there was 
the question earlier about the SQL Server data pipes. So with a lot of these big engineering groups and large enterprise customers that we have, you know, they had a mass and mass amounts of iForm Builder data constantly coming in, but it was tough to absorb and tough to, you know, obviously you keep almost a maintenance on their API to make sure that any new data that was being transformed into the forms or any new fields that were added had to be reflected on the back end. So what we wanted to do and what we wanted to, you know, kind of put our heads together in Xerion is create a way to streamline data instantly from iForm Builder straight to SQL Server. This is really big in the engineering environment because a lot of engineering groups use SQL, you know, SQL Server, Arc SDE, um, you know, ArcGIS Server, Arc, you know, Arc Portal Server, um, all that. And that's kind of where they, that's, that's where they house all their data. It's where they run, you know, queries, uh, reports, every, you know, et cetera. And obviously, you know, use, utilize their GIS data in the back end through the server. So, um, and real quick, I mean, I mean, SQL Server is, is it is what it is. It's, uh, it's, you know, automatically pushes data from iForm Builder into SQL Server, um, you know, everything from A to Z on that, in that standpoint, a lot of groups are, you know, lever leveraging it. Uh, the SQL Server is actually just a, it's underlined into the Gnosis environment. It's kind of just a, it's a really small portion of Gnosis. Um, and I have a, I have a workflow uh, coming up here shortly that will actually show, um, you know, data that's collected and then ran through the SQL Server to show instantly in the back end. So, Really cool stuff on the SQL Server. If you have any more questions, definitely feel free to uh, feel free to reach out, and I will uh, answer those. So next part of that, I just wanted to do an end-to-end -end workflow. Uh, I want to kind of you know utilize a quick demo here. I'm going to hop out of the uh, uh, out of the demo here, but I want to do a demo about a manhole inspection workflow demonstration. So a lot of our different groups are use, utilizing our platform to do infrastructure work, whether it's stormwater, SSCS, um, any kind of pipeline work. But I'm going to actually demo a manhole inspection form. So I guess while I'm getting this set up, Barrett, uh, you may ask if there's any more questions. Uh, there are some questions. I'm just answering them uh, right now. Uh, well, one of the questions is, is it possible to get your own app icon with it or is that not possible? And I'll go ahead and answer that one, Frederick. Um, that's actually, to get your own app icon, you would need to purchase a white label from us. Now, we do have a white label program where uh, not only would you be able to customize what your app would look like, but you also have, uh, it, it's the distribution of the app itself can be done differently. Uh, you can email it. Uh, you can have it on your website. Um, there's a lot of different possibilities on that. And we'd be happy to talk through a white label with you at a later time if that's something that you're interested in. And that's it. <laughs> great, great. So I'm going to run through a quick uh, demo workflow here. Uh, basically, act I'm acting as if I'm a field user. Um, you know, a lot of our engineering groups love that we, you know, work better together with Esri. Uh, so whether it's, you know, using collector and triggering a form straight from collector or using a custom web map uh, and triggering a form, an uh, iPhone builder form uh, straight from a web map. So uh, before so a lot you of go groups... into that, <laughs> um, can you tell some folks on here, uh, one, what a manhole is and two, what Esri is? <laughs> so a manhole is everywhere out in the street it is, it is where you can access the SSCS, which is the sanitary sewer, uh, evaluation system. So basically infrastructure to access sewer pipelines. Um, if you walk out in the street and walk about 200 feet in each direction, you're going to find a manhole, um, unless you're in a very rural area. Uh, what was the other question? Uh, if you wouldn't mind just mentioning uh, Esri for those folks who are unfamiliar. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Esri, Esri is the company that basically invented GIS. Uh, GIS is Geographic Information Systems. It's the easiest way to put it is it's uh, geography and computer science mashed into one. Um, you know, it's everywhere. A, a lot of, you know, it's about engineering. A lot of engineering deliverables are now all in GIS. Um, you know, everything from reporting to visually seeing your data and visually seeing the attributes in your data all in one system. So ESRI is, is, is great. Is that good? Yes, thank you. Great, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a custom workflow. If anybody has any questions, feel free to interrupt Barrett and uh, Barrett, feel free to interrupt me. So I'm, I'm going to start from my map standpoint. Uh, so I'm going to dive into collector here and I'm going to dive into engineering manhole inspection. 
So I'm going to dive into my map. I'm going to go into uh, and find find the data. Well, if we can work on a on a good Wi-Fi here. So the map it now opens up. Yeah, I now see. So we have groups that are now leveraging Collector, obviously, to you know publish their feature services, so their field crews can now see obviously where pipelines are located, uh, manholes are located, any different asset management, work order systems. Um, it's really good there. But you know, obviously, you know. Collector in Esri is very good at you know visually showing your data and um, excuse me visually showing your data and you know being able to collect that parent data. But where iForm Builder comes into play is now to collect that related table, that subform data, that robust data on or offline the grid. So very cool stuff there. So we're just going to dive in here to where I'm located. We're going to zoom in. We have a bunch of dots here. We're going to imagine these are all manholes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a manhole. Once I click the manhole, the table of contents on the right triggers uh, just some parent information. There's not much here. We have groups that have almost, you know, 15 or 16 different fields here showing parent data. But what I want to do is I want to dive in and I want to inspect this data. I'm out, I'm out in the field. I need to inspect this manhole and go from here. So what I formulated is, is we work better together with Esri through our ARC connector. And that's something I can touch on later on at, at a later time. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger inspect manhole. And what this is going to do is use the object ID to pass parent data over into customized forms that we have built within iForm Builder. So you're asking, how does this work? I haven't touched the thing. This is all happening automatically. Basically through our ARC connector, you, you sign into your ArcGIS online account. Once you sign into ArcGIS Online, you can now link forms together from iForm Builder to ArcGIS. That's probably going to be confusing to a little people, to some people, but uh, I mean, I'd be feel free to ask and answer questions uh, at a later time. So I'm just going to run through some dummy data here. Capture GPS. Um, you know, maybe we have we, maybe we have an updated GPS uh, GPS location of the asset. Um, so there's some skip logic there too. You know, obviously add my add my current address. Um, you know, the more skip logic you have in a form, uh, the faster the form gets filled out, the faster the form gets filled out, the more inspections they can do. So we're going to just fly through the form here. Uh, we're going to dive into a, a subform here, a manhole. Um, I can now scan a manhole ID, or I can now just, you know, fill out a manhole ID. So I'll say this is manhole ID 111. And again, this is all dummy data. Take a photo. While I'm running through the form for the people that are kind of new to the iForm Builder, uh, iForm Builder platform, there's multiple different elements. We have over 40 plus types of elements that you can add into your form. Now, if you don't, if you if you just saw, I'm now going three layers deep um, into a into a form. So I uh, I had the parent form, then I had the subform data where I filled out uh, you know data about an inspection, what type of uh, manhole it is, etc. Well, now I'm now inside the manhole and I'm doing you know. Manhole infractions. Are there any infractions? Well, in this case, we're going to say there is. So we're going to say infraction four. Uh, we're going to say it's at high level and verity. So as soon as I clicked high, it's going to now notify my supervisor. It's going to say call supervisor. Um, if I said medium, infraction must be addressed immediately. Email record to to the email. So maybe you have project coordinators that sit in house and are constantly seeing data that are flowing in, or DBAs that see you know high infractions. Well. Project managers need to, you know, be notified of this, and they need to relay the relay the message back out to the field. So we're going to say it's a high infraction. Um, we're going to take a picture of the infraction. So I can now three three layers three three layers deep into the form. I'm now taking more photos here. And you can even add an audio note, but we're going to click done here, and this will shoot us back into our other sub form. Everything looks good. We'll hit done. And we need to sign off on this inspection. So we'll sign off on the inspection. Uh, date, of next inspection date of next inspection, we're going to say one month from now. And we need to email this uh, infraction out. Uh, so it's a high infraction. It, it can, you can have set this up as automated, or you can do it yourself. Uh, so we're going to say I, I have a new supervisor. So we're going to say it's myself. And we'll just type in my email here. So what I'm doing is making sure I type in an email to where whenever I sync this record up to the cloud or up to, you know, the server, I can now, uh, the people that I want to notify about this high infraction will be notified. Um, and I'll show you here shortly. So I'll hit done. Um, 
I'll sync my device because I was working on an on, offline environment unless till I sync. If you have anything to add, Barrett, you can. No, I think that's great. Um, so just to just to walk through that again, you started in Collector. From Collector, you were able to launch iForm, and uh, once when you were in Collector and you launched iForm, we're assuming offline, and then uh, once you've completed that record, you you were able to then sync because we're assuming okay, you're back in the office, you have connection, and you sync your device, and this is the step we're at now. Correct, correct. So what I'm doing now is I'm syncing my inbox. Um, so whether it's, you know, now that this, you know, this report now got emailed out to uh, project managers or, or even, you know, different, uh, you know, different field crews that are out in the field that are working. So this is, uh, this is what we call our manhole infraction high severity report. These are all custom workflows that can now be utilized to our professional services. I mean, obviously, this is just a demo. Um, and, and I wanted to make sure I showed this to everybody, but as you can see, it now, it now shows our infraction photo and now shows the lo location of where that manhole is that has that infraction and then shows a little bit of apparent data there. So from this report that has now been generated and shot straight to my mobile device on my email, I can now navigate to the manhole. So I, you know, I'm obviously new to the place. I need to find this manhole to go fix this, fix this infraction. Um, so I can utilize Google Maps. And this now takes me straight to the manhole. I can now use the directions from Google Maps. Or what's better now is uh, uh, I can now claim this infraction. So I'm a new field crew. Project manager just called and said, hey, I just emailed you a new report. Please go claim the infraction and fix the infraction. So what I'll do is I'll claim the infraction. Now this triggers a new, brand new form. Uh, this triggers now what's called our manhole infraction resolution form. So this takes parent data from that high infraction and now it gives me a whole new form automatically uh, on my device to now go and resolve this this uh, this infraction. So we can now take you know the photo is now resolved. We can take the photo, go from there, and say that it was resolved by myself. Hit done, sync that up, and all that is now synced to the server. And now you have uh, you know you almost have a custom workflow here. That's it's. A, it's great. A lot of groups are utilizing, you know, third-party applications. Um, you know, I, I was talking with a group, uh, an engineering engineering group recently, and basically, um, you know, they're utilizing our attachment widget to draw up web maps, customize web maps to do water uh, water ciliation, uh, species uh, collection, everything in everything in between in the engineering environment, which is really cool. And a lot of these custom workflows is is something you know we're in the business of, and we want to make sure that you know. Uh, nothing happens without a conversation, and we're having a lot of good, healthy conversations of you get the iPhone Builder platform, you get what it does, you know, you see a lot of a promise in it, but now what's next, right? This is where the Gnosis is coming into play. This is where the SQL Server data pipe is coming into play is how's that data getting to where you need it to go stream instantly and automatically, and that's kind of what, you know, we're, we're in the business of and we want to, you know, ultimately accelerate your mobile workflow, but obviously uh, solve any data issues in between. Um, so, so just one to, quick question um, that came up while you were presenting, and I know you're going to go through this workflow too, uh, but it was actually asking uh, the location of where the, it was that it was grabbing. Is it grabbing the location where you complete that record or grabbing the location where you sync the record? Great, great. No, it's grabbing the location of where the actual asset is. Um, so whether it you know whether it's you know you update the GPS and that's all configurable configurable in the back end, um, so you can have it grab it, it's all customized. So you can all, you can have it grabbed where the location is shown in the GIS data, or you can have it grabbed in the say if say if it's a new updated GPS. So if you're doing, you know if you're doing uh, fire hydrant inspections or water valve inspections. Um, and they construction workers move the you know move the hydrant after 10 years of the last time somebody went to inspect it. You can now update your GPS, and what that report does is that grabs the most updated most new updated uh, GPS location. And then with that, um, of course, when you're talking to engineers, they're they're curious about accuracy. And so right, uh, right now you did the device accuracy, but uh, can you talk about the GPS receivers as well? Definitely, definitely. So what's great about smart devices is 
uh, Bluetooth compatibility. And I think that a lot of groups and a lot of engineering groups are now starting to switch over from these heavy, you know, durable Trimble equipments or Juniper system equipments or whatever you name it there. And I think they're starting to go to these smart devices because they want to, we almost joke in our office that we're the gateway drug of choice. Um, integrations is our key. Um, you know, how can you integrate with our, with our system? So um, a lot of groups are utilizing iPads. So um, you know, like you said, GPS accuracy is important. Obviously, if you're just using Wi-Fi compatible iPads, you're going to get not very accurate GPS, uh, plus or minus 30 plus feet. Um, every device, every smart device has a, a GPS chipset involved in the device. I actually have a blog post that we can actually share uh, uh, along attached with this, uh, with this demo here um, that kind of breaks down the difference between a GPS and an AGPS and how it conflicts if you have cell signal, cell signal or not. So a lot, of a lot of groups are utilizing their phone, so they'll connect to the nearest cell tower that triangulates with different satellites. Um, I can dive into the weeds a little bit more. Um, you know, uh, if you would like to, you know, GPS is really important to you, which a lot of the time it is for engineering, especially in asset management. Um, you know, third party, uh, third party GPS is your Trimble Ones, your SX Blue, your Aero Series. Um, everything to the uh, the Juniper system geoid, um, and it's all Bluetooth compatible that functions and takes over that AGPS chipset within the device. So, uh, you know, one thing that you know in my past experience confused me was, well, you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at my form and I'm clicking refresh, but I'm not seeing you know I'm not seeing the numbers that are changing. Uh, don't don't worry. The GPS is definitely is is changing, but it's not changing it within the form builder. Uh, basically, whenever you attach or whenever you link up a external GPS uh, hardware, it overrides that a GPS chipset within the device. So, a lot of groups are leveraging uh, whether it's a Trimble R1 to get you know plus or minus two feet, you know you know sub meter accuracy, and then uh, obviously you can't do sub centimeter, but um, sub meter GNSS accuracy is is where a lot of groups are going with our smart devices and it, it's really paying off. So it's good stuff. One more question about that before you go back to the workflow of the demo. Um, someone asked, does the horizontal vertical estimated accuracy from the location widget reflect the higher accuracy from a Bluetooth receiver? So um, that's a good question. I would think that, um, you know, one, in my previous experience, um, you know, we we definitely uh, we definitely relied on a external GPS to collect data, um, so I wasn't exactly highly worried about the you know showing off the uh, you know the different vertical and the horizontal accuracy there. Um, you know, I, I don't maybe I'm not understanding the question correctly, but um, do you mind repeating that for me? Sure. It's just they're asking, um, does the horizontal and vertical accuracy from the location widget reflect the higher accuracy from the Bluetooth receiver? So basically, um, with the, the Bluetooth GPS receiver, is it going to show in a more accurate result for the horizontal vertical um, accuracy? Um, or is that... As, as for right now, no. Um, as for right now, it's still going to actually override, or it's, it's still going to, the form builder is going to show the accuracy of the device. Um, it's not going to actually show the, 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 the accuracy of the external GPS. But whenever you obviously see the data reflected in the back end, the, the GPS point that is taken is overrided from the external GPS. All right. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to going back to the workflow of the demo. <laughs> Uh, for the workflow of the demo, I just wanted to briefly show the workflow of the demo here. I went from uh, collector, uh, triggered through the object ID. I, I triggered and passed over parent data. Um, again, this is this was a manhole uh, demo form. We have many groups doing work orders the same way. Uh, we have you know multiple different uh, assets that are now in collector. Uh, some dots are red, some dots are green, depending on if the work order has been completed or not. And that's another demo that we have. And if that's something that interests you, definitely feel free to call. I'd be more than happy to get our engineering team on, on, the, on the hook and uh, do the demo for you there. Um, from the form builder, we, we submitted multi-layer information into the iForm builder uh, platform, um, which triggered you know, and ran through the SQL Server data pipe that I'll show here shortly. Uh, right 
now is, is this is kind of just a screenshot of what the data looked like when I, when I hit done and I hit submit on the record I completed in iForm Builder. So at the very far left, you see the data came in through the iForm Builder webhook correctly right there. So whenever that data came in, it passed through, and this is all through the SQL Server data pipe, and it's all you know, streamlining that data where it wants to go. And within, you know, this is obviously is within, underlined within the Gnosis environment. So all this data is now stored in a long-term storage and ultra, ultra secure environment. So as you can see, there's been 13 different manhole uh, parent forms that have been completed. And then you now have three different sub forms from the parent form. So we're diving, you know, three layers deep. Uh, but we want the manhole street parent form to go to, straight to SQL Server because we want that GIS data reflected instantly. But we want that high severity infraction subform to now be emailed out. And all this can be customized in, you know, definitely different workflows. And it all depends on your own use cases. And I'm willing to learn more about, you know, all of our existing customers and their, you know, their use cases currently and how can we help automate it. And uh, just to reiterate that, because there were some Gnosis questions earlier. Um, this is... Uh, for iForm Builder and what th this view is right now is actually a, a screenshot of Gnosis where you're taking that iForm Builder data and like Connor was saying it has different triggers and different actions. Um, essentially there's uh, different workflows for each part of that project and um, this is one of that those workflows is going through the SQL Server data pipe but another part of that workflow is triggering those emails and that's those emails are what we actually saw earlier um, when Connor synced his device. We saw th what that email looked like. So that was configured, and that whole workflow that Connor showed earlier, a large part of that was made possible through Gnosis and uh, then the SQL Server data pipe. And again, all this data is reflecting straight into SQL Server, and that SQL Server can now be sitting in an ArcGIS map to where as soon as somebody hits done out in the field, you just refresh your map and there's your data. Um, instant, secure, and all, all right there in, in, within your SQL Server. Um, a lot of groups are loving, you know, the real time. Of course, that, that's until the device is synced to a lot of groups that are working offline. Until they sync their device, all that data will now flow through the pipe and uh, be reflected instantly. So a lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of different workflows that people are leveraging. And I think that, you know, I think, uh, one, I think the SQL Server data pipe would be great for, you know, field-heavy um, asset management work out in the engineering environment. So uh, moving right along, um, I kind of just wanted to wrap up here, but how can Xeron help accelerate your team's mobile workflow? I mean, yeah, everything from our flagship product of iForm Builder to, you know, what's next question, you know, think big data with Gnosis and, you know, securing your data and redefining your data and storing your data all the way into building these customized reports and, and et cetera. And I mean, we'd, uh, you know, we like to almost look at ourselves as, you know, we don't, we don't like to look at ourselves as a vendor. We like to look at ourselves as a partner. We want to walk shoulder to shoulder with you guys and make sure that we can help automate your mobile workflow as much as possible. Um, solving big data problems. If you're, if you're currently using the iFor Builder platform and you're out there um, and you see, you know, big data issues that, you know, all this mass amounts of data is coming in, but internally in the house, you're having trouble breaking down that data, um, you know, distributing that data where it needs to go and, and let us help. Um, it's, you know, nothing happens without a conversation. I think that one, we'd be, you know, more delighted to, to help, you know, accelerate mobile workflow because, you know, once you do that, you save time and money and that, that's the end goal. So, um, and I want to briefly touch on our professional services, everything from product and feature enhancements to feature requests, building custom workflows. Uh, we provide a, a vehicle to expedite development. Um, you know, if you have developers in house, great. I think that's more the merrier. Um, if you don't have that capability, reach out to us. Let us do the heavy lifting for you. A uh, custom development, third-party applications, app development. We're all we can all do that. We can all help you, help your teams, and help your development teams set up uh, an ultimate uh, workflow uh, automation tool there. So and staff just, augmented. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to say uh, one of the great tools that we have is we love to go on site and we do these um, custom on site visits where you you just say, hey, we need someone from iForm Builder to come see our workflow. We spend a day in the life of your users and uh, we learn a lot about your project to then come back and develop a solution with you um, to, see, to see where you guys see the problem areas, but also where we see there to be a problem areas and um, able to build that custom solution because of that 
uh, feet on the ground understanding of the workflow. I just wanted to mention that quickly too. Great, thanks Barrett. And just that third point there, staff augmentation, we provide extensions to your team. And like Barrett said, you know, I was going to dive into that, but I think that she touched on it better than I would. Um, training, data management, outsourced help desk, anything we can help provide and, and help your team uh, accelerate mobile workflow. I wanted to add this into, uh, into the PDF that we'll be sending everyone here. Uh, this is the ebook for GIS and engineers. Uh, it covers a lot of uh, some, some of the similar different kind of workflows that I just did. It also covers on, you know, different utilizing the GPS uh, atmosphere of things. It also utilizes or touches on, uh, you know, how engineers are, are utilizing uh, the iPhone Better platform to, to, you know, on an everyday basis. So very good stuff. And I guess that, uh, that ends uh, my time here. And I want to thank everybody for uh, listening in. Um, again, I'm the account manager for most of the engineering firms uh, that are existing customers within iPhone Builder. I think that um, I'm having you know, great conversations with groups I haven't talked with, and I'd love to have more conversations and learn more about your use case and see what we can do to help. Um, again, Connor Henwood uh, with Xeran Software, and thank you, everybody. All right. Well, thank you so much, Connor. And um, before I actually open up the door for some more questions here, uh, Connor, would you mind just going to the next slide? I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of all the different support options we have available. And Connor's touched upon these, um, but when we send over the PDF, you'll be able to click on these as well. And um, it surprises me every day how that people aren't aware that we have a customer success center. So if you haven't gone there yet, I urge you to go check that out. And we have an agent who's um, either, well, we have a couple agents. Um, so we're usually, you'll find someone on there for almost all 24 hours, uh, five days a week. Uh, we're trying to do this seven days a week, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, again, these are just some other resources that we have for you. And in the next 48 hours, we'll be sending over a link that has the PDF and today's recording, as well as additional information that Connor mentioned uh, that we're going to share with you. It'll also be located in there. And of course, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Connor or anyone else on our team, and we're happy to help. Sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Great. Have a great rest of your day.